Hey guys, 420 scene here. Hope everyone's having a super stony day. Let me know what you're token on and where you're watching the video from. Drop a like, subscribe, and check us out on Patreon. We got smoke sesh live streams, giveaways, tips, early access to all our videos, a lot of rad stuff on there, so be sure to check that out. We do have a few announcements before we get started with today's video that I want to get out to you guys, starting with us changing our upload times to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time starting on December 2nd, because as you guys can see right here, it looks like you guys are more active in the afternoons and, and I see a lot of videos that we come out with start to get a lot more traction in the afternoon hours so I'm just giving you guys a heads up on that. Last update before the video, I promise. Actually wait, first order of business. Blueberry muffin. All right, last update before the video, I promise. We're gonna start our new winter run on December 22nd, so if you're trying to grow along with me, pop your beans on December 22nd. We're gonna be running Apple Betty by Herbie's, and my boy Chris, who's also a local breeder, hooked me up with some stuffed cherry gelato cross with tree fruit, so I can't wait to run those beans. Shout out to Chris, love you, man. Sorry for those long updates, but it is what it is. I gotta at least get those updates to you guys, so you're not like, what's up with the videos, bro? You still making content? So now we can talk about the reason why I made this video. Today we're going to be talking about determining the difference between spider mites and bud rot because it's actually interesting. I never made a video talking about how to distinguish the difference between them both and what made me want to do this video is because we have a help section on our discord and one of our members had an issue and couldn't really tell what it was like if it was bud rot or spider mites because you know they do look a little bit similar but there are ways you can tell the difference so you'll be able to know how to tackle the problem accordingly. Unfortunately, I can't post any sample photos due to age restrictions, but I do have it on my Patreon if you guys want to check that out. But even if we don't have a picture on here, it doesn't matter because you can still use the information I'm about to tell you as being helpful. There are a total of three factors that you need to take into consideration. Environmental conditions, webbing mass, and consistency. Also, those of you that think that I read articles and just regurgitate or copy and paste and make a video on it, I'll tell you right now how I make my videos. People have issues on Discord. I help them out because I've had experience with probably most of the stuff that you have questions about. And I dictate talk to text to my iPhone and then I airdrop it to my MacBook Pro and then I just pretty much proofread it. So that way, whatever I'm telling you, I don't find myself repeating what I'm saying. So I feel like I had to clear that up to anybody that thinks I'm a fraud or I'm a scam or whatever the internet world says. If you want the results of my last couple of runs, just check out the homepage of the Glass Girl Scout Cookies Harvest video. Or I mean, you can even just go on Discord and check out some of my other past runs that I've done. Trust me, I have nothing to hide and I never did. I also never made it a secret that I script everything. I mean, you know, you could see right now through my glasses, maybe possibly that I got, you know, I'm reading a script. Literally even my life stories are scripted, but anybody that knows me, especially on Discord, knows that I've helped thousands upon thousands of you guys and I will answer any questions on the fly without any kind of articles. And if I learn something from one of you guys on Discord or Patreon or even an article that I'm reading, I'll let it be known that I learned it from an article. So about 95% of what I tell you is from my own personal experience, like the last decade that I've been doing all this. And the other 5% is stuff that I've already admitted to learning about. And of course, there's just gonna be misconstrued because it always does. But I feel like before we keep going with the video, I wanted to make this known. I know a lot of you guys are probably like, oh, you don't have to explain yourself, but I wanted to explain myself. Heck, even the intro to the video with what I'm gonna be running was scripted. I just like to structure my content. Back to the environmental condition. Conditions. During the flowering stage, keep the temps from the like upper 60s to about the mid 70s. I feel like that is the most optimal conditions that I've had and the best success with. Now, this only pertains to if you're running indoors. If you're doing an outdoor run, you can safely have the temperatures a little bit higher, even into the 80s. Never treat your indoor and outdoor temperatures the same because it's not the same. Outdoors, you're in the middle of the woods, you're in nature, you're you're just you're outside. You know what I mean? There's no no confined space is going on over there, but like when you're indoors, you're either in a room or a tent or in a confined area. So your environmental conditions outdoors are always going to differentiate with your indoor temperatures, your indoor environment. And I say this because some people will misconstrue what I say. Like always outdoors, you can have it 90 degrees and you won't have any issues. So what am I talking about? But that's just it. You're not in the confined space when you're outside. But anyway, keep your RH levels between 45% and 55%. Like I've said in so many videos, and 
you can keep it that way during veg and flowering. And I feel like that's a safe median to be at. If you're running super in the dominant flowers, you could probably push that humidity into 60%, but that's where it gets a little sketchy. So if you're trying to stay on the safe side, just stick with 45% and 55%, you'll be all right. The next thing you wanna look at is the webbing consistency. Spider mites have this tendency of establishing consistent webbing, and it's going to be like, I mean, it's gonna be all over your flowers. It's gonna be covering it like all the way. It's almost gonna look like a super insane spider web, like X10, you know, prestige mode covering everything. Like as if you were to drop a web, like a web blanket over your ladies. It's, it's really hard to just explain it that way. It's probably the best way I could explain it. Spider mites have more consistency as opposed to bud rot. And just thinking back on when I did have bud rot, it would never be consistent. It would be like, you know, different parts of the flower and, and something else you want to consider besides the webbing consistency would be the webbing thread. This actually brings me back. My mom was doing a run. I think it was uh, maybe like three or four years ago. I'm, I, I don't remember. Maybe three, four years ago. She had spider mites and I mean, it was absolutely insane. You know, she was doing a run in the basement. She wasn't really like taking care of anything. There was like no airflow. It was really bad. It literally looked like, <laughs> it looked like the flowers had this big, like wet, like someone threw a net over it or something. Like it looked crazy. I'm talking the whole flowers were just completely covered. And you know, looking at some of the pictures on Discord of the bud rod, it just looks like spider mites have a much thinner web thread, if that makes sense. Now I know what you're thinking. There's no such thing as thread on bud rod. But like what I'm talking about is when the mold starts multiplying, it almost does look like a spider web. You know, there is some kind of threading, I guess, you know, based on just looking at it. Like it's got its own thing going on. And I've noticed that the thread, if you even want to call it that, is a lot thicker when you have bud rot and it's just a lot less consistent than spider mites. So that's something you might want to consider if you have either one of these issues so you can start the process of elimination. And I did actually make a Patreon post about this exact thing about a week ago. So if you're unsure whether you have spider mite, webbing, or if you have bud rot, focus on your RH levels, your thread thickness, and most importantly, your webbing consistency, because I feel like that's gonna be the one thing that will determine if you have spider mites or if you have bud rot. So that's gonna wrap up today's video, but before I close off today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. I really appreciate the love and support. So I'm gonna close out today's video. Be sure to drop a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, Stay safe, peace.